Hello, welcome to the Scotch Talks podcast. I'm your host, Scotch. This is my seventh time doing this intro, so I hope I get it right. It's been a while since I've talked in front of a microphone, so yeah, it's kind of a, uh, it's like getting back on a bicycle after not riding. No, that's terrible. It's like, I don't know, it's hard. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, we have Dewey Saunders on. He's an amazing uh, graphic designer, uh, collage artist, whatever. He's just an all-around amazing artist. Uh, I've followed his work for, like, years. Um, not years, maybe a year and a half. But, um, you know, I was, I'm was. i a big fan of uh, Anderson Pock, and, um, you know, I had to Google search, like, who does his album covers. And comes up as Dewey Saunders. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I met him in November, and, you know, I talked about doing a podcast, and, you know, Dewey, if you're listening, thank you. Um, yeah, and I hope to do another one with you soon. Uh, so let's just jump into it. Thank you so much for listening. Follow Dewey if you don't. He's incredible and constantly post on uh, Instagram, so it's, like, just really good content coming from him. Uh Thank you for listening again. Uh, Feel free to subscribe if you like doing that. (laughs) Um, Or just rate or comment or do whatever or just keep listening. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Have a beautiful day. Thanks. Welcome to Scotch Talks Podcast. Yo, yo. I'm your host, Scotch, and today we have Dewey Saunders. Hey, what's what's going on, man? Woo! Um, Dewey... What do you do? You do collage work? So, yeah, I I would say primarily I'm a graphic designer by trade. Uh, Collage is definitely one of my specialties, but I also dabble in illustration, photography, art direction, um, pretty much everything um, under the sun as far as graphic design is involved, depending on what the project is, is kind of what dictates the media. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. So I do want to get into, like, how did you get started with collage work or graphic design? Um, well, I started doing collage while I was in design school, and I was more of an illustrator at the time, honestly, and I would do collage to cover up drawings I didn't really like. So, Oh, wow. I would plaster like the inside of my sketchbook uh, the first couple pages with collage and basically just cover up anything I wasn't really feeling and... You know, after a while, these little collages that I was doing in my sketchbook were just really appealing to me. I was messing around with, like, gel transfers and collaging on top of those and kind of doing, like, photocopy transfers and all kinds of mixed media stuff, just experimenting. And, yeah, the collage just kind of stuck after a little little bit. Um, It really wasn't until... I would say like 2010, 11, when I started getting very serious with collage. Mm. Up until then, I was just illustrating, doing commercial and editorial illustration for magazines. Oh, wow. Yeah. How'd you get into that? So that's what I graduated uh, with was an illustration portfolio. Okay. So I did uh, have a degree in graphic design and illustration was my focus. So everything was just like hand-drawn, watercolor, pen and ink illustrations. Whoa. Yeah, one of my clients was the New Yorker right away, so I did what? a bunch of stuff for them. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Damn. Um, and then after a while, like the editorial thing just wasn't really exciting. The assignments I was getting, I wasn't really making a work that I was excited about. So um, after a couple years of living in Philly and working with different musicians and rappers and different bands, I was able to do a bunch of album covers. So my work slowly started to get into that lane of the music industry. Mm. Um, and that's kind of when the collage medium was developing as well. It kind of coincided oh, wow. with that. Awesome. Yeah. Dope. Um, actually, one of my first album covers that came out on vinyl was for a band called Brown Recluse, and that was all collage. So that was kind of when I realized that it was a good medium to... Uh, work within, especially for like bands and uh, different music releases. Mm. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. Where did you go to school? So I went to uh, Tyler School of Art at okay. Temple University in Philadelphia. Okay. 
And at the time, it wasn't even part of the main campus. It was kind of separated and a little bit outside of the city. And there was a nunnery behind it. What? And it was on this beautiful, <laughs> like, honestly, it was kind of a special place. It was really beautiful uh, campus. Mm. And um, the buildings were kind of older at the time, but the teachers were so great. And my class was pretty awesome, too. I graduated with um, Jessica Hish. She was one of the biggest uh, typography Oh, wow. Base graphic designers, um, my friend Zach Gibson, and yeah, just a lot of like kind of heavy hitter graphic designers. So wow. it was a cool class to be a part of, I would say. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, it was sick. And so when did you move out to LA? And do you so like I moved, LA? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and we moved here January 2018. So oh, it's wow. been a little more than a year. That's recent. Very recent. Yeah. Yeah. And you like it? We love it. <laughs> We're starting to get the hang of it. You know, it okay. takes. I've heard people say it kind of takes two years to be super comfortable, you know, when you move, like, especially to a different coast. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that's probably true. Like, after a year, it was definitely chill, but, you know, it's such a big city and it's so spread out that I think it's going to take a really long time to kind of, you know, unlock the city. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great. I love Highland Park. This part of the, you know, this part of town is really nice and it's perfect for us. It's super chilling. Uh, it's kind of like living in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been here, and I was driving around, and I was like, whoa, this <laughs> yeah. is different. It's it really has nice an old stuff. L.A. feel to it. Yeah. And it's changing a lot, um, you know, which is, which is good, and it can be bad for, you know, certain perspective. But I think it's cool that... Um, how it's changing it's not like super fast and there's all these mom and pop shops still mm -hmm. and new restaurants and i think it's a it's kind of a cool balance for a neighborhood mm. but yeah we, we're loving la for sure nice yeah that's awesome hmm. um one thing that i see about you is um you post almost daily to instagram yeah how do you create that much work I think some of it's reposting too. Okay. Um, especially for, I feel like if I have a bunch of new followers and they haven't seen the stuff that I did like a year or even two years ago, then I'll just kind of like bring up a project that, um, you know, that's not new, but it's still really fresh. So I kind of like recycle some stuff and, you know, people don't scroll to the bottom of my feed. So it's new to them and I like to just keep a constant stream. Um, just for engagement and also, you know, the algorithm favors you if you are posting constantly and engaging. Yeah. So I try to be on the good side of the algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people see my stuff. I hate that algorithm. Yeah. But that's because I don't post. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You gotta learn how to work it. Yeah. Um, how did you come up with this gradient? Because when I look at your work, it's that, like... A little pastel, I don't know what it is, like either teals or oranges or pinks. Yeah, so that's been happening for a long time. Um, honestly, I remember one of my screensavers from like 2012 was like a really cool gradient. It wasn't this one, but I would just kind of uh, go into a trance looking at the screensaver, shifting the gradients, and I knew that I wanted to, you know, work with gradients. and. It was funny because in design school, gradients were always kind of a no-no, mm. especially just like digital ones in Photoshop. Like, and I understand why, but I think that you know all the things that you weren't supposed to do are actually kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. But these are done with spray paint um, and or like acrylic or like a paint sprayer, so it, it doesn't have the, like a very digital feel to it but I do try to keep them very clean now mm -hmm. um, and I just yeah it just goes with my with my color palette the pastels and um, you know it is kind of psychedelic too because it's slowly transforming you can't tell where it ends and where it where it begins mm. which I really like yeah and they also kind of feel like skies too or sunsets yeah I mean, when I look at them, it, it reminds me of California. Yeah, totally. A little bit. I'm like, oh, these are like nice California-like 70s, 80s colors. Well, people thought I lived here before <laughs> I moved here. They were like surprised that I didn't already live in L.A. 
even yeah even clients they just assume that I lived here because my work I, I think it just very, looks very Cali yeah it does so that's kind of funny where do you get your uh, I mean where do you get your style from like because when I'm looking at it it looks like 70s retro collage work I don't know it's just super interesting yeah well it is very vintage because of the stuff that I pull from is usually from a different time um, you like, know do you have a favorite magazine that you pull through well old playboys have interesting ads and mm. st- and uh, photography old National Geographic's um, it really depends and I'm also kind of a snob about paper quality too mm. when National Geographic switched over to the like semi gloss and like thinner paper it just took like the the quality away but there's these like 50s Nat Geo's from the 50s 60s and the photography is amazing they're um, you know Kodachrome and Ektachrome photography the paper mm. is really thick and it's honestly just beautiful stuff to kind of look at or to cut up and use in collage yeah so when you do stuff like this mm-hmm. um which is the anderson pack is it is that right pack or yeah Pac? it's the anderson pack come down um gold record plaque yeah so you designed a plaque for the gold record um is that did you put that on your computer and then print it from your computer or is that so like we d- i didn't fabricate this plaque myself okay this is made from the single artwork that we sent to the production office that puts these plaques together so basically the art director for this project Corey Gomberg he was able to work with the production team and separate the Photoshop files because all the layers are separate and kind of raise a few of them so they look like they're in the foreground so basically I've never seen a gold medal like this, but this is almost like a diorama because yeah. the plane is on another surface and, you know, the the tiger and the legs and everything, they're on that same surface and everything else is pushed back. So, yeah, it is like, um, you know, it's like the collage came to life, basically. But it's all from the single artwork, which is that cover on the bottom. Yeah, it's pretty That's sick. so cool. I mean, how does it, like, I asked you this in the kitchen earlier, but, like, how does it feel to see your artwork up on, like, a gold record plaque? Well, this has been a long time coming, and, you know, I remember working on this artwork, and it's just been so many years of being, having my hands in this project that it's not, Mm. like, very surprising. Mm. Um, It is... It is surprising to look at it and see how it's layered and and produced, but having the artwork all over the place, that isn't surprising anymore. That's just the way it's supposed to be. Mm. You know, that's what I'm here to do. Wow. I see my art everywhere. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah, I love it, but it's not shocking. It's just like, yep, that's normal. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, I think that's just the way to look at it. And, you know, my fiance Bethany, is really good at that, too. She, if I'm, like, you know, surprised about a project, it's, she's like, nope, that's the new normal. And it is. Mm. Even the future project, it's, it's another project. It's another cover. Yeah. And I work on every project just as hard, you know. It's, they're all the same, you know. Do you have a struggle... Balancing, like, projects for clients and your own projects? Um, Sometimes when I get involved in a personal project, it's a little tough to pull away to do client stuff. But Uh I think that's a good thing. Um, I really like to have personal projects happening at all times, almost as if I'm always working on, like, a grander, a bigger picture and then the client stuff comes in and kind of like interrupts me and I do that stuff to pay the bills. Yeah. But then I go back to the bigger picture. Mm. Do you want to be able to support yourself just on your own projects eventually? Yeah, I can see myself being an older um, career gallery artist, Mm. like a fine artist, basically just being represented by a couple galleries. 
yeah. worldwide and putting out books and limited edition prints and selling originals. Mm. And then the client stuff would be few and far between. Yeah. Like more of like a specialty thing. Mm. Um, eventually, you know. That's just, you know, vision for being older and, and not really wanting to work on the commercial side as much. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I do want to get back to this really quick. Uh, you went to art school. Was the process of committing to being an artist hard? Because um, for me, it was like either business school or art school, and I was like caught in between the two of making that decision. Did you have that trouble as well? Like, oh, No, I didn't have another option, really. Oh, wow. And I had a lot of support of just being able to do what I wanted to do. Wow. Um, so yeah, I quickly found art to be a way out of like a typical nine to five thing, even mm -hmm. though if it was going to be a nine to five, it would still be like creative. Um, I thought I was going to be a photographer first and then it moved into design. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew I, I wanted to do something creative. Mm. So my family was very supportive and my grandmother actually went to Tyler where I went to art school so she helped guide me and honestly I've been interested in, in the arts since I was a little kid so it just was very natural so just to do it mm -hmm. yeah. that's awesome it wasn't really like a big decision yeah. just like I'm gonna do that that's so awesome <laughs> yeah yeah it's been this constant struggle for me it's like yeah. do I want to do this is this what it is because I mean I was told like if you want to throw your life away art and psychology are the two things or music like, you know yeah or music yeah like, those are the things and those you, are the most interesting things yeah and <laughs> the things that like even people who work nine to fives go to those things to get away from their like themselves their lives their jobs they go to concerts they listen to music constantly yeah. they like view amazing artwork on instagram or whatever it may be but um yeah well those are the high points of culture too and it's yeah you know it's a shame that our current culture doesn't value those things and doesn't take care of the artists like other in you know other historical times where mm. artists were almost treated as royalty mm. um, you know we're special creatures and this current you know system doesn't really value that so you have to find your way and I think the youth values that but just the infrastructure and how the money's set up the artists are usually the ones to you know get funding cut and to not be valued but I think that's kind of like a, a negative stereotype that can easily be changed too. Yeah. It's like, I don't buy into that. Like I know the value of my stuff mm. and I don't get pushed mm. around anymore. Did you ever have that where you well, did? Yeah. I mean, when you're new to the game, you want to like get work and be seen. So I did a bunch of stuff just so I can get some like exposure. Yeah. But at a certain point, exposure doesn't pay the bills. And it also <laughs> kind of messes up the playing field if you're, like, let's say, doing something for free, which is really desirable for an artist to get a free cover or free artwork. But nothing's really free, and that work isn't really good. And you're also messing it up for people who are trying to make a living and do this stuff for real. So it's like I see people on, like, Twitter, and their rate sheets they're posting are, like, Twenty dollars for an album cover, and I'm just like, <laughs> "What are you thinking? Like, you're insane. <laughs> like, like, you can actually do that. That's fine. Um, yeah, but it's just kind of funny. Like, the the value of art is is really kind of there's a huge spectrum of what people value, and mm. that's almost why I want to get into fine arts because the pieces can be perceived as like very very valuable mm. and what artists do inspire you I would say David Hockney David right Hockney. off the top okay um Rauschenberg um Joan Miro obviously you know Matisse current artist I would say Stephen Harrington is really cool um Matthew Craven I really like older artists though like always Aubrey Beardsley and um, you know more contemporary people like Ed Ruscha and um, 
you know, the heavyweights. The heavyweights. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I like looking back, though, more than, like, looking at what's trending right now. Mm. You know? Yeah. Because everything has been done, and you just gotta, like, you know, try to not work within what's on trend, or at least not be defined by that. Mm. Do you find yourself sometimes giving into trends? I think I create trends, and then if I stay within that, then I'm giving into it. But if I created the trend, then that's okay. And what trend did you create? <laughs> well, because <laughs> I mean, I, I I didn't kind of I didn't start that. collage, but when the Malibu cover came out, collage was adopted by hip hop and pop culture, mm. um, pretty much largely due to a couple factors but definitely Malibu cover being one of them and that's not directly from me it's a lot of people noticing that yeah so I'm just putting it together in retrospect so awesome yeah oh my god damn yeah and you know it's funny because now collage is a big thing but people are doing collage digitally which is also a little bit of an oxymoron because there's no such thing as a digital collage. That's really just like a, a design, like graphic design. Mm. <laughs> collage means to glue, so it does oh, have wow. to be a physical thing. Yeah, it comes from a French word, uh, okay. colère. So for it to be collage, you can't just do it on your phone and you can't just do it on Photoshop. There's all these people that are just putting together every photo they can find of Drake or every photo they can find of whomever into a collage quote unquote but that's not a collage and it's not interesting um but it can be visually appealing and it is content but it I wouldn't call it collage yeah do you ever get burnt out from it um or like uninspired really. okay not really I mean I would say that sometimes working for a deadline on a commercial project can get very tiring, but I also kind of like that too, being under the gun and having to deliver stuff. I think that's exciting, honestly. Mm. Um, the next day after an all-nighter, yeah, I'll feel burnt out, but um, honestly, I just love being able to like put it down and deliver the product and you know, be satisfied with how it looks. Yeah. I think that's like the ultimate, and if I'm tired from that, that's okay. There's a time to be burnt out, and there's a time to be, you know, under pressure, under the deadline, just, like, getting it done, mm -hmm. and having to do long hours. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sometimes you can get burnt out or uninspired, but that's when you just, like, forget everything and go on, like, a couple-day trip or, you know, mm -hmm. go on a hike, just forget about art or go to a museum and pamper your artistic <laughs> sensibilities. True, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all part of the process. Like, mm. for me, looking through magazines and reading um, is a big part of my process, and kind of being interested in certain historical eras and being obsessed with certain people and kind of going down rabbit holes um, as far as, like, research and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, like, uh, where I can find a lot of inspiration. Mm. Um, and then making connections between certain things and that's what collage is too it's like finding connections where previously there weren't any yeah is there um <clears throat> hmm. let me see what was that question I was going to ask mm -hmm. one moment though all good. So for like people who are either deciding to go to art school or not going to art school, what would be like, how was the art school experience for you? It was good. I I'm kind of interested in that. I don't think people need it necessarily, but I did. Mm. Um, and I might have ended up where I am now without it, 
but it's unlikely. And it's just because Tyler... I wasn't very successful at graphic design when I was in school, but I learned so much, and I still hear my professor's voices in my head now. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> I learned so much about concept and delivery, and I'm so critical with my work, and I think that I'm able to deliver like very finished-looking stuff because of going to school. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'd... You know, I learned so much, and it's not really about the portfolio that I graduated with, even though it was interesting and it got me work. Um, it taught me to think like a designer and to be able to um, think critically. Yeah. 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 When you look at your own work or you're working, like, what is a, one or a couple of things that you do struggle with still? Looking at my work? Or, uh, yeah, or making your work, or... Um, I mean, there's always struggles in the process, and sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes if I'm working on, like, a cover and there's not really much direction, it can be kind of a struggle, because I work best when there's either a, a creative director or kind of like a strong direction, mm. especially if it's for, like, an album cover, um, you know, sometimes the work is easy, but sometimes it does take a lot of elbow grease to kind of put together. And I find my time struggle. I'll find myself struggling with a project for a day or two. And then, not magically, but somehow in like five to ten minutes, it can just come together in the last oh my God. five minutes. Wow. And it's like all this struggle and all this grinding and all this sweat and blood <laughs> and tears. And you don't think you're doing anything. And then all of a sudden it's done. Mm. And I don't know how it happened, but it's over and it looks good. And, oh, wow. And it's done. Dude, and that's so, so cool. Yeah, it's like sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's this big struggle and then the pieces just come together. Mm. And it just kind of appears out of all the hard work wow um but yeah it's like you know in school i guess maybe i struggled with how to turn on the creative switch and always be on point but i don't think it's about turning it on i think it's about like never turning it off mm. and always being engaged and always being creative and always thinking about stuff mm. and you know maybe that's a little obsessive but i think that's the way you have to be, especially if you want to be in, in my position, which is a little different than a typical graphic designer per se, who is kind of anonymous and behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. In a way, I have a little bit more of like a public side because I do like fine art, I do graphic design, but I'm also involved in, um, you know, all these other things. So it kind of adds up for, to be this like special kind of thing mm. but I just went off on a tangent I forget what the question was <laughs> originally <laughs> <laughs> it's all good but yeah um, and for yourself uh, what would be like what was some of the best advice that you that you were given um, my pertaining to artwork or even life my illustration professor David Noyes was really amazing and like I that's the professor's voice that I hear in my head still and in a good way or a bad way no in a good way okay. <laughs> and he was really tough but you know he knew that I had talent and <laughs> I think he called me like Mr. Potential he's like you got potential but you have like a hard time delivering and mm. and um but he would really push me and and the things that he said were kind of along the lines of like he's like think about the music that you really like think about what defines you and think about the things that get you really fired up and all those things you have to put into your work mm. and you have to make your work very personal and you have to channel everything that you love about life and yourself like into the work wow and his yeah his words and advice were always so meaningful so 
Yeah, I definitely like hear that and a lot of other things that he said. Um, I mean, I was illustrating at the time, but it pertains to any kind of creative field. Yeah. You know. And so using that advice or advice that you've gotten over the years as well, like what best advice would you give to people who are looking up to you? Um, well, a lot of the stuff we talked about kind of like to be not influenced by trends, but that's kind of a rough thing. We're all influenced by things that we see, mm -hmm. but just to kind of look into the past more than what's happening now mm. and see and study how not only graphic design and graphic arts, but how arts have moved in cycles over the years. Um, and I really think it's art history is important. And I always say that. Um, and also one, um, one thing that one of my teachers, he was a graduate student at the time, I was in the etching class and he like noticed that I had talent or whatever. But I remember he brought me into his office and it was kind of like, a, <laughs> I think he was just kind of like, he like wanted to like tell me something that it was important. And he was just describing the artist, artistic process as being like, a, as like a shaman or like a shamanic quest. Whoa. And that also stuck with me too. So not only shamanic quest yeah like so like the artist is almost like a shaman and like a modern day shaman mm. not like you know an old an ancient one that drew on the you know caves but you know current one that you know the, it's a special position to be in and you're almost like a conduit and a translator for the people of like things that are not, not there Oh, wow. So, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so, he brought you in there and said that, and then... Yeah, so I was like, you know, wow. that was very inspirational, too. Oh, my God. And it's important because the... That also is um, related to the process being more important than the finished product. Mm. It's just being engaged with the process. Do you find yourself fixated on the final? Uh, yeah, definitely. Especially if it's like a deadline. Like, yeah. all right, this has to get done. <laughs> <laughs> no time to think. Yeah. Um, damn, dude. That's legit. It sounds like you had some like amazing teachers. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. Definitely amazing teachers. Wow. Even though the facilities were old, the teachers were amazing. Wow. <laughs> damn. Um, yeah. And so going forward, like, where do you see yourself? What, like, what do you want um, going forward? I think it's important just to focus on what I'm doing right now and to continue the things that I'm doing. And even if it is in diff different directions, kind of just expanding the current things that I have on my plate. So, you know, my design practice, expanding into larger campaigns, maybe into more of like a studio thing, mm. maybe being an art director for a label. Um, but also like publishing books and magazines and creating merchandise such as like home goods oh, and wow. soft paper goods. Whoa. So good for yeah, you. Yeah, just expanding. Yeah. Like, like I've done all these things just in like little project forms mm -hmm. and just taking those and expanding everything that I've already done. Yeah. And just pushing it. Have you ever thought about murals? I've thought about murals. Um you know, I used to do a lot of painting, and now that my practice is primarily collage, I think it would be cool to do a big collage mural, but that is also a, a different thing. It wouldn't be, like, an outside thing. I think it would be, like, a more of, like, an inside thing with, mm. like, big vinyl yeah. cutouts and kind of, like, making collage on the wall with huge stickers. Whoa. I think that would be sick. That would be sick. Um, but also, yeah, I mean, murals definitely... Like, I don't want to turn down anything, and I think um, visibility and exposure are still things that I are really interested in, just mm. getting my work out to as many people as possible. Mm. Which I think is happening, Yeah, obviously. Um, for Future's album, 
you did the design of the CD, right? Or the, well, I did everything. I the did the cover art. and the packaging. Okay, so do you have to create... Mm, how do I put this? Because you did the vinyl for his album, right? It came out on vinyl, right? Yeah. So do you have to do all the different sizing for the vinyls and mm -hmm. then for the cassette tape? They're almost like different designs in a way because each format is a different oh, wow. proportion mm -hmm. and size. So everything has to be redesigned. So Is that tough or is that like... Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> it took forever and I had no time to do it. Oh my God. But it's dude. still... I had a lot of preparation, but then when I finally got all the information... Mm. All those plans went out the window, and I had to just do everything on the fly. Yeah. Um, it was kind of fun. I kind of like being under pressure. It was a little stressful. Uh -huh. But I'm really happy with the way it came out, and that's what's the most important thing. Yeah. Like, I don't care if Dude, I lose sleep. Dude, it looks sleep. so great. It looks so fucking unique. Yeah. It's so amazing. Yeah, it really... It was fun for me because it was a different style than what I usually work in. Um you know, you can tell it's my work if you're familiar with just my hand, but it was a pleasure being on set and working with the photographer and mm -hmm. art director, and originally I wasn't supposed to design the cover, it was just the packaging, mm. but then they really liked the treatments I was doing, and I ended up designing the whole cover and just touching the whole project and doing everything. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. Wow. It was a good experience. Oh my God. Yeah, it was really cool. So do they come to you and say, here's what we're going for? Can you mo like do mock-ups? I had or? a mood board Okay. and really good direction and references. Did you listen to the music and then come up with the mood board? Or? No, the mood board was supplied to me okay. right off the bat. Oh, got you. And I met everybody on set, and I did some initial typography so they could lay down the lettering on the photos they were taking mm. on set but that all changed too and you know we ended up working on the cover over the period of a few months wow yeah the shoot was in august it didn't come out until january the final cover was done in december so oh my god it took like three or four months but that's because it was just kind of like you know a long time between communications the actual cover design took like an afternoon to put together because everyone agreed on what it was going to look like mm. and then i just i put the whole thing together in a couple hours wow yeah because i had all the elements already to go dude yeah wow because i had to it was due <laughs> and i had like less than 24 hours to deliver it Holy so crap. but i love that yeah like are you good under pressure? Not like I want people, like, needing stuff from me or being, like, irritated that I haven't delivered it yet, but I do work better under pressure sometimes. Uh-huh. Um, but it's also a preparation. Like, I had everything prepared, so it's not going to start from scratch. I was just assembling it for, like, very last minute. Okay. Damn. Yeah. I've still got to be quick with it, though. Yeah. There's no dilly-dallying. That's true. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, that was a legendary project. Uh, shout out to my man Spike Jordan for the art direction on that. We went in on some punk rock, heavy metal, like... It's so sick. Post-future past <laughs> aesthetic. It's a portrait of future with trees? Yeah, so he's in a forest that was built indoors. That was on set. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my god. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I got to meet everybody. Got to meet future and... This as a part of the project from the ground up. So, so do these artists come off, like, come to you and, like, talk to you about what they want, or is it just with the art director, and do they, like... Just with the photographer and art director. Okay. They're in charge. Do they contact you after and say, like, thank you, or have they? Um, with the artists like Future, not really. Okay. I mean, whoever's managing a social media account did that, but I don't think mm. it was Future... But I'm I'm pretty sure he was feeling it, or else we wouldn't have released it. You know, True. he had to pick which one we were gonna go with. So wow. there was, you know, pretty much direct contact because um, he was making all the final calls. Mm. So yeah, he had to have been feeling it because I'm really happy with the way it came out. That's so sick. Yeah, 
Oh my god. It's pretty crazy. Damn. Um. But yeah, on to the next. Yeah. I'm excited, dude. Your work is fucking awesome. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, yeah, I'm I'm happy about moving on to you know larger clients. Doing the future thing was great, and just having all that exposure and eyes on the project is is nice. Like I for it to be featured on late night TV and just Times Square and billboards. It's a really like satisfying feeling knowing mm. that you know the work is good enough and people like it and it's doing the job and it's matching the music which Mm. is you know what I'm hired to do is kind of match the visuals to the music and make it seamless that's my goal anyway yeah are you ever afraid of your work never being or like maybe it's not good enough quote unquote for sure yeah yeah I mean self doubt is a big part of the artistic process yeah um but then after struggling with it and having a piece come together, that self-doubt is quickly diminished and my enormous ego is back. No, I, <laughs> um, I think that it's also peaks and valleys. Mm. Like being a little depressed and down on your work is totally normal. Mm. And I think that just finding this inspir- inspirational artists that you look up to and, you know, it's okay to make work that's not great either it's all part of the journey yeah and i've had to make a mountain of shit work to get to where i am Mm. 10 years of shit work Mm. and at the time it wasn't bad but i think experimenting and not being afraid of making work that isn't successful is a part of the journey and it's a part of the learning experience Mm. um but yeah the self-doubt is normal but i also think it's really important to have a healthy dose of confidence, especially if you want to get work. You don't really necessarily have to believe in yourself all the way, but you have to appear very confident in yourself Mm. if people are going to trust you with their money and their visuals and their campaign. Right. So everything that I send into a client, no matter if I'm feeling it or not, I say, I'm loving this. Hope you dig it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, because I just, yeah. I want to put a positive spin on it, and, um, yeah, the, the confidence and being happy about your work, it's magnetizing, and, and I think that it's important to, you know, feel proud and happy about the stuff that you make. Mm. I think that's a good place to create from, mm. is of, of, of being content and at peace. Mm. Damn. It's so, a good ass advice. Yeah. yeah. It's also a good place to just... Yeah. I gotta get on the road. Mm-hmm. Anything else? I think else? that was perfect. Yeah. Um, I would just say for, you know, artists or graphic designers or young artists, just to focus on the work and not much else. You know, making good work is the most important thing. More than um, going out and networking or social media. I think if you make the good work, then people will see it, and then everything that you are striving for will happen. Mm. But making good work is the most important thing. Thank you for that. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where can we find you? So Dewey Saunders on Twitter, Instagram, DeweySaunders.com. Check me out. Woo. Thank you.